Well, welcome back to Diesel Talk. My name is Tony Salas, here to give you a quick tip on fueling and sensor input. Uh, usually this would be called a case study. And in this case, when we talk about case studies, we talk about issues with vehicles or real life scenarios. Well, we have a real life scenario. A very common diagnostic tip that I can tell you is with rebuilders working on injectors and don't have the proper equipment and basically are probably swapping parts or just cleaning nozzles and making the injector look pretty and reselling them because there's a lot of resale of common rail injectors sold out there. It kind of reminds us of a problem we had with a customer that brought us in a truck. Actually, it wasn't a customer, it was actually a shop. A shop had brought in an engine that they had rebuilt for a customer of their own, and they had a problem and they couldn't figure it out. It was a Cummins 5.9 like shown on the screen. And in this case, what happened was that the truck started great. Um, there was good fuel rail pressure, no diagnostic trouble code set either, lift pump pressure great. Uh, engine, like I said, was just rebuilt. The thing is when it was brought to us, I was working with a technician and my technician was telling me that, you know, this thing just doesn't have any power on takeoff. In other words, it fires up great and you take off with it. The problem is, is that you imagine you're at a stop, for example, and what happens is that you accelerate, you take off, and at that point, it just has no boost, no power. And you think you got a turbo problem, but the thing is after about having the pedal on the floor for about 10 seconds, it starts to come alive and then eventually it takes off. Obviously, you're going to tick off some people behind you in traffic, but the problem again is no power upon takeoff. In other words, no boost. And the thing is, everything pinpointed to the turbo, and they had looked at the turbo, see if the wastegate was stuck open, which is a common thing on a 5.9 Cummins, and there was nothing found. Uh, fuel rail pressure was fine under load, there was no problems there. So, in this case, you know, it was kind of was uh, blowing our mind on why does this thing not boost? The thing is, my tech looked at me and said, you know, Tony, he goes, the problem is that, you know, you need to have heat to create boost from the exhaust. Again, you need to create heat to create boost. In other words, you need to have a good combustion, hot exhaust to create that boost, you know, along with pressure. But the thing is, and the way he made this uh, very important to understand is if you look really closely, for example, on the exhaust manifold, uh, you're going to notice there's a shield. And when they had rebuilt this engine, they pretty much spray painted everything black, you know? And the thing is, he's looking at me saying, I could, I know it's fueling, Tony. And I go, well, how do you know it's fueling? Because if that engine was running properly and the fuel was injecting properly, you would have the paint burning off the shield. So in this case, he says, it's injectors. Definitely injectors the problem. I said, well, I can't justify the injectors. We did a return flow test. We did fuel rope. I mean, everything indicated that everything was fine. Make a long story short, we replaced all the injectors, fired up the engine, and within seconds, you know, the paint started burning off of the shield, which was telling us that at that point we were having a good, adequate burn. In other words, proper combustion. Well, went ahead and put the truck in reverse and then pulled out, went and drive and took off, and sure enough, everything was running great. So what's the moral of the story is, if you ever come across, and we've seen it already with Par, par Stroke 6.4s and Duramaxes, where everything looks great. I mean, you got good fuel rail pressure, good suction or lift pump pressure, the turbo's working fine, and you still don't have enough power, you have a, a long power lag, it could be that the injector, the lift on the nozzle is not adequate. It wasn't calibrated correctly or wasn't adjusted correctly when they rebuilt the injector. In other words, we're not spraying enough fuel. And in this case, not creating adequate heat. So one of the things we'll tend to do, like we had a power stroke 6.4 with the exact same symptom no boost, no power takeoff. It would take a while to build just like this 5.9. And all we did, like you can see on the picture on the left, is got spray paint and sprayed on the exhaust manifold. If the paint didn't, if the paint did not burn off, then we definitely knew it was either A, we had a compression problem, or B, we got a fueling problem, which is most of the time fueling. So next time you get a vehicle that has no power upon takeoff, but yet idles great, has good fuel rail pressure, possibly no code set, and the turbo's fine, simply just spray paint against the exhaust manifold and tell them if that paint burns off. So, quick little tip there, it's funny, but it works. Another thing is on another case study I wanna tell you about is a 2009 Power Stroke 6.4 liter. Um, this vehicle was towed in, no exhaust flow, no power. We uncorked the exhaust and sure enough, the DPF was plugged. There's a picture of it. And actually this is after the guy cleaned it a little bit, but in this case, we had a serious carbon wall forming on the inlet of the DPF. So in this case, the vehicle also didn't have no boost at all. I mean, this vehicle was terrible. 
The rule of thumb, anytime you're dealing with a vehicle that has an after treatment system such as this one, that has a diesel particulate filter is to uncork. Always uncork, because if the vehicle has no power, and in this case there's no exhaust flow, the engine will run, not run, or it'll run with very little power. It's straining itself. In other words, it's constipated. So in this case, we just simply disconnect the down pipe from the inlet of the diesel oxidation catalyst. And we're trying to determine if that's a problem. In other words, we're running the exhaust uncorked, and that's what we're doing. And that's what we found here, okay? The vehicle head was not running, uncorked it. The vehicle uh, at that point ran, but we had no boost. The thing is, when we looked at the exhaust pipe, and another tip here to keep, it, uh, keep yourself up abreast about is the fact that if the exhaust tip is full of carbon, as you can see, or soot, if you want to call it that, uh, that's telling you the DPF channel is open. I mean, game's over. We know, definitely know we have a DPF issue, and that's what we're seeing here in the exhaust tip on this truck. So we immediately knew that the DPF is also clogged, and we needed to go get it serviced or replaced. In this case, we got lucky. We went ahead and sent it in to get clean, along with the diesel oxidation catalyst. The thing is, this truck was running so loaded and so constipated with the DPF and DOC loaded that the thing is, the, uh, pretty much the veins weren't open in the closing. The nice thing about a 6.4 liter is that you can manually by hand move the lever that moves the veins. Well, it was jammed, it was stuck. This called for us to remove the turbocharger. In this case, we removed the turbocharger and sure enough, broken pieces all over the place. In other words, the high pressure turbo was toast. Might as well do the low pressure turbo while we're at it. So we needed to add a turbocharger. The thing is, what caused all this? That's what you need to remember. You could replace parts, you can clean DPFs, but what caused this to actually fail? And in this case, what we're trying to show you here is the fact that a smoke machine was used. So as you can see, right after the adapter of the smoke machine, the boot had a tear in it, and we had pretty much a leak there. Well, why is that important to understand? Well, there was unmetered air coming in, meaning it is not measured by the mass airflow sensor. Will that affect fueling, in other words, fueling going into the engine? Yes. So the question begs, why did the DPF get so loaded? Why is it that the turbo failed? Well, in this case, we saw that the mass airflow sensor was not getting or measuring all the metered air. It was obviously over fueling. And in this case, that caused the DPF to become premature loaded along with the DOC. That was the driver kept driving this truck loaded, no power. So he kept pushing on that turbo. And the problem is it was so constipated in the exhaust that it probably ran the turbo super hot with the high pressure between the exhaust manifold and the turbos itself. So that caused a catastrophic, uh, in other words, the destruction of that turbocharger like you just saw in the previous slide. So the moral of the story is what caused this whole picture and a, a whole issue was the fact that the boot was torn. So what were the repairs the customer needed? Well, he got lucky. They were able to save the DOC and the DPF. It cleaned. Uh, obviously, he had to change the oil. It was just cooked. New turbos, a new intake boot because it had a tear in it. And then at that point, we had to check the intake and EGR. It still was full of carbon, but it wasn't too bad. But we also found four injectors out of range too, which wasn't good either, which meant that there might have been some perk going to the cylinders, but we definitely knew we needed four injectors. So again, what we're just trying to say is that, you know, you may want to look at what the causes were, and this is what we found here. So a good investment is to use a smoke machine. And if you haven't used a smoke machine like the one I show you there, uh, that smoke machine also has a, a trace or a die not to mention i can take pressures up to 25 psi i can apply on the intake simulating boost pressure and that works very well so that kind of tells you about um, fueling and how the sensor can be fooled by just a tear in the boot so i hope this tip helps you and we look forward to seeing you again thanks for watching